Benjamin, thanks so much for joining with us. Israel now has a new government. Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu announced the good news just before the midnight deadline. When he takes office, Netanyahu will become prime minister for an unprecedented sixth time. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl brings us the story from Jerusalem. Just before the midnight deadline, Israeli Prime Minister designate Benjamin Netanyahu phoned Israeli President Isaac Herzog. I wanted to let you know that thanks to the huge public support we received during the elections, I am able to form a government that will take care of all citizens of Israel, and I intend, of course, to establish it as soon as possible. Netanyahu's coalition consists of his Likud party and religious parties. There's no disputing on any end of the political spectrum that it's going to be the rightward most government that Israel's had in its 70 plus years of, of modern history. By law, Netanyahu is not required to reveal the terms of the agreements he made with his coalition partners until 48 hours before the new government is sworn in. That will take place in the next week or two. In the past few months, the United Nations released a number of anti-Israel resolutions, and both the U.S. and European Union restated their support for a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's a non-starter for Netanyahu's government and much of Israel. They've reacted somewhat cautiously from Washington, uh, still saying that the relationship with Israel and the U.S. goes on as always. We will work with the Netanyahu government. CBN News senior editor and political analyst John Wagi says Netanyahu will work to shift the focus in the Middle East. He has a vision for diplomacy. He's going to try and transcend Iran by going through the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia and seeing if he can't change the balance of making the Palestinians the center point of Middle Eastern negotiations and diplomacy. Though a plurality of Israelis has consistently voted for Netanyahu, Reaction to the new government is mixed. This is a bad government, very bad. It's a racist government, and I don't believe it will last more than a year, and I really hope it will not make it. We have a lot of hopes from the new government. We hope that this government will uh, be a real right-wing government that will do a lot of good for Am Israel, for the nation of Israel, build the country, build uh, new settlements. After five elections in less than four years, the big question on most Israelis' minds is, will the new government last? Only time will tell. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, my prediction is it will last because the alternative to go into continual election after election after election is not going to be appealing to any Israeli on either side, any, any of the side. They don't have two parties. They have um, dozens of political parties. And then you always have to form coalitions and craft agreements in order to come to that majority and to elect a prime minister. So Benjamin Netanyahu, again, uh, he's been the longest-serving prime minister in Israel's history. He gets another term, uh, and I wish him very well. But the world is absolutely against Israel right now. The number of resolutions coming out of the U.N., and then to my amazement, people trying to call for a two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. They uh, clearly don't understand the reality on the ground and that that would uh, literally destroy Jewish cities that have been created and exist and would put Israel's security at absolute risk. You would be able to shell Tel Aviv from those borders, and Israel cannot have that. You cannot survive as a culture if you have an enemy in open warfare against you, which they've had their entire existence. So uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel. Uh, this is something the Bible requires from all of us, all people of faith. Well, in other news, during his address to Congress, Ukraine's president thanked the American people for their aid in the war against Russia. He also promised that that aid will ensure global security. Wendy Griffith has that story and more from the CBN Newsroom. Wendy? Gordon, fresh from the front lines, Ukrainian President Zelensky met with President Biden in the Oval Office Wednesday. In his joint address to Congress, he stressed the need for ongoing U.S. support in Ukraine's war against Russia. Gary Lane reports. 
Ukrainian President Zelensky appeared before a joint session of Congress, thanking the American people for their help in its war against Russia. Russia could stop its aggression, really, if it wanted to, but you can speed up our victory. Zelensky was the first wartime leader to address both houses of Congress since Winston Churchill. He said more help is needed if Ukraine is to defeat Putin's army. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. And the Ukrainian president is likely to get his wish. Earlier at the White House, President Biden announced a new aid package for Ukraine, worth nearly $2 billion. The assistance includes the deployment of advanced surface-to-air Patriot missiles, America's premier air defense system. Zelensky has requested the Patriots to ward off Russian missile and drone attacks. We need to be working with the Ukrainians to give them the ability to go on the offensive, because you cannot win a war on the defensive. Ukraine aid is also included in the nearly $2 trillion omnibus spending bill, $45 billion to both Ukraine and NATO in fiscal year 2023. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell insists aid to Ukraine is the top priority of most Republicans. Providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians, that's the number one priority for the United States right now. Kevin McCarthy, who is seeking to become Speaker of the House when Republicans take control early next month, warns his members won't be writing Ukraine a blank check. Many of them want accountability for the billions of dollars and weapons already sent to Zelensky's government. In the meantime, ongoing Russian attacks against Ukraine's power grid mean many Ukrainians are in for a cold, harsh winter without electricity. Although many also lack food and water, Zelensky says his people will endure. And he predicts Russian President Putin may launch a major ground offensive in the spring. But he says with America's help, his countrymen will claim victory. May God protect our brave troops and citizens. May God forever bless the United States of America. Merry Christmas and happy victorious New Year. Gary Lane, CBN News. Thanks, Gary. Well, Congress is racing to pass the omnibus spending bill by Friday before a partial government shutdown. The $1.7 trillion bill is 4,100 pages long. That's more than three times the size of the Bible. North Carolina Rep Dan Bishop tasked his team with combing through the document. Some items they found, $575 million for family planning to, get this, limit population growth in areas where plants, animals, insects, and other life is at risk. There's also $410 million for border security in several Mideast nations, including Jordan and Egypt, but not here, not at the U.S. Uh, border. And um, also, the bill also has thousands of earmarks for lawmakers' pet projects in their home states. Hmm. Well, a major winter storm threatens to snarl Christmas travel. About 215 million Americans are facing weather alerts. Blizzard conditions are sweeping the Midwest today. In Chicago, authorities are telling people to stay off the roads. Airlines already canceling more than 1,000 flights. Tired, stressed, hungry, just hopeless, honestly. There's snow in Kansas City waiting for us, so we are a little bit nervous about getting there. Hopefully you'll make it. A blast of Arctic air will extend over much of the country. Texas and the southeast will go far below freezing. Parts of the northeast will see sub-zero temperatures. Well, as many hope to make it home for Christmas, that will not be the case for millions of Americans behind bars. For inmates and their families, this can be a painful time of year. But as Brody Carter reports, prison ministries are doing what they can to encourage those who won't make it home. Roughly two million Americans will spend the holidays behind bars, including here at Virginia Beach Correctional. While it may be a bittersweet time for the inmates, for the ministers who visit, they remind them that the holidays offer the beauty of God's forgiveness. What we do is we put chaplains in jails where they belong. <laughs> yep. But working in a jail is a very difficult thing. And so we try to help the staff and the deputies understand we're not just here for the inmates. We're here for people. 
and God loves people. More than a thousand inmates are calling this jail home. Most are first time offenders and Chaplain Joe Kelty serves as their lifeline to hope. And that's the intersection, you know, it's the Great Commission. Help other people get through their stuff and find God in the midst of their, of their struggles. Kelty is part of the Good News Jail and Prison Ministry, a nonprofit network of 400 chaplains in 25 states. The volunteers preach the gospel and help people of all faith backgrounds cope with life in jail. One of the more moving uh, parts of the job is when uh, an inmate finds out that a loved one has died on the outside. And here they are in jail and they can't be with the family. That's some of the more difficult conversations, but also the most meaningful. Today is Christmas time in the jail. Volunteers are spreading good cheer in the form of Christmas cards and postage, new socks, cookies, and an activity book with the gospel message. I have more faith now than I did ever before. 32-year-old Jesus has been in jail for nine months with another six months to go. He says the only thing he wants for Christmas is patience to finish out his sentence. He has delivered me from so many things. You know, my life could have been worse, and I know I'm in a situation right now that is not very good looking, but I'm alive. You know, I still got a second chance, and that's the grace of him. The chaplain program is one of a handful made available to the inmates during their time here and one that gives them hope when everything else might seem hopeless. Your life is essentially over. If ever there was a time that you would turn to God, it's probably when you're going through something like that. It's pretty remarkable. The folks that are incarcerated in here are, are, are paying a debt to society, and we understand that. And, uh, but they're human beings as well, and, and they certainly deserve to have that, that vision of hope, that, that there's something outside of here and that they can certainly turn their lives around. In Matthew, Jesus says, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then his disciples looked at Jesus and said, Lord, when did we do these things? Jesus replied, truly I say to you, when you have done so to one of the least of these, you have also done so to me. Now, Chaplain Kelty says we see the heart of God in that passage, and he's inviting everyone this holiday season to bless their communities by blessing others. I'm Brody Carter, CBN News. Wow, that's the gospel right there. We need more of it, especially in prisons. Gordon? And especially at Christmas time, when you visit prisoners during Christmas time, you remind them though, that there's hope. So much of what they're dealing with, uh, they're named inmate, they named convict, all of these things try to dehumanize them. They're still people made in the image of God. And Jesus said it clearly, when you come to me in prison, you're, you're not just coming to a person, you're coming to someone made in the image of Jesus Christ. You're doing it unto him. So what a wonderful Christmas message. What a wonderful thing to do. And I applaud everyone who is involved in pr prison ministry. The Ukrainians are facing a freezing Christmas this year. People living close to the front lines of the war are experiencing the most desperate conditions. In the midst of the danger, CBN's Orphans Promise is working with local churches to help those suffering to survive. Chuck Holton brings us this firsthand report. Devoid of electricity, water, or heat, life on the front lines here in southern Ukraine is sheer survival. The town of Orihiv once was home to about 20,000 people. Today, less than 10% remain. Abandoned pets roam the streets, hungry and traumatized by the near-constant shelling, which has damaged or destroyed more than 70% of this city. The few who remain here say they've nowhere else to go. No car, no money and no desire to give up the land their ancestors have occupied for generations. This village is only a few miles from the front lines and it's under fire every day because the strategy the Russians are using is to basically just bomb these towns into submission, terrorize the people into leaving, and then they can move in without any resistance. But these villagers are not going along with that plan. They're staying here in the village, but they're living down in the cellars of this apartment building. Let's go take a look. 
Here? Yeah, we follow them. Svetlana has five children and she's been staying in this basement since June. You can see how smoky it is here now because they're using this green firewood to try and keep the place warm. And they're living in a tiny little section of this basement. Why haven't you left and gone somewhere else? No, I want to live on my land, my Ukrainian land, and I hope that my city will be delivered soon. We just want peace. We just wish there were no rockets and bombs flying over our heads. We just want peace. CBN's Orphans Promise and other organizations are helping people like Svetlana stay alive through the winter by delivering food, medicines, and warm clothing to this pastor of a local church who decided to stay here with his family to help those who can't leave. When we were thinking about what to do, whether to stay or to leave, we were praying, and God answered us and said, I will bless you whether you go or whether you stay, but my name will be glorified more if you stay. Oh, it's really very dangerous to be Ukrainians right now. Nobody know who will be next. It doesn't matter where you are in Kiev, in West Ukraine, in Lviv. It doesn't matter. Or here in front line, you don't know who will be next. And so close to the front lines, more people are seeking God. Before the war, we had 30 to 40 people coming to the church, but now we have services with about 100. So the church has the answer for the people here. The shelling gets worse after dark. So I asked if I could stay the night with Pastor Victor and his family. Not long after nightfall, the battle began. There's a pretty large attack happening nearby, and this family I'm staying with responds to that by gathering around the kitchen table in prayer. That's what they always do when the bombs start falling. And they believe that it's vital to their protection. Uh, they believe that they're here for a reason, that God intends for them to stay here, and that through prayer and faith, they will be able to continue to serve the people who can't get out of this area. And they'll be protected in the process. And I see that these people who are still be here, this church, who are serve people here, they fighting for me too. It's like another level of soldiers. Jesus Christ was pushed on them. We are the army of Christ. We are here to fight on his side and to bring the word of God to these people. From Orihiv, Ukraine, I'm Chuck Holt for CBN News. Well, that's an inside look as you go down into the cellars of these apartment buildings to see uh, the tiny cramped places that people are being forced to live in, uh, forced to burn firewood and, and endure these, these hardships. They don't want to leave because it's their land. This is their home. And what the Russians are doing is an absolute war crime. They specifically targeted the electrical grid, the ability for people to heat their own homes, to provide fresh water for themselves. They're trying to cut off food supplies. They're doing these things to terrorize a civilian population. But here's the good news. People like you care and say, no, we're going to help our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We're going to be part of the relief effort, whether it's for the refugees who have left or for those who are staying. All of that is happening through our Orphan Promise Centers throughout Ukraine. We're not new to this. We've been in Ukraine for decades, and we want to have more help, more, more help for those desperate people, because Ukraine, it's going to get very cold this winter. Uh, it already is, but you don't know cold until you've been in Ukraine in February. I've been there in February, and uh, to have no heat, no electricity, no running water, we want to do our part to help them. So if that's you, if you want to be a part of it, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. A portion of every gift you give goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people and help those refugees, help those people living in Ukraine. Another portion goes into the work to preach the gospel, to let people know in these difficult times, there's a God who loves them who cares, who cared enough to come and die for them. Now, more than ever, we need to get the gospel around the world, and we need your help to do it. So join with us. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Ashley? 
Well, up next, this woman asked God for a sign that her husband would be healed, and that's exactly what she got on the first white Christmas in South Texas in 100 years. Watch this amazing story when we come back. Plus, Gordon and I will be praying for your Christmas miracle right after this. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries, and with your help, we can do even more. We are out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? sign. That's what Tony Espinoza asked God for after she prayed that her husband's heart to be healed. Tony asked for a very specific sign, and here's how her request led to a white Christmas miracle. Every time I pray, I have always asked for a sign, always since I was a little girl. That's all. Just a little sign, Lord. Just a little sign. Tony Espinoza had been praying for a miracle since March of 2004. That was when she and her husband, David, learned he only had two years to live. And he just said, you know, I hate to tell you this, but your heart is enlarged. It's not beating like a normal heart. EF is the efficiency uh, rating of, a, of your heart. A healthy heart is considered at 60, and I was at 12%. It was shock. You know, my first emotion was shock. I was numb. I really was. I was like a zombie the first few days, the first week. My prayer was just like, okay, you know, help me through this. They sought a second opinion and a third, but all came back with the same diagnosis. So it was more about uh, getting my family ready for when I wasn't here any longer. I've accepted the fact that I'm going to die. But Tony and their daughters weren't giving up faith. They made an appointment with doctors at the DeBakey Heart Institute, seven hours away in Houston. I'm not ready for this. I'm, I'm not ready to be alone. I'm not ready to be a widow. I'm not ready. I was asking God just, you know, that David gets a heart transplant. That's what I was praying for. They asked their family and friends at church to pray for David. Oh, that was awesome. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, suddenly I'm on a prayer list everywhere. They all rallied around us and, and prayed for him, and it was just amazing. For the next seven months, they continued to make monthly trips from their home in McAllen to Houston for checkups. I wasn't improving, I wasn't getting worse, but my EF continued to be 12%. The doctors told them David needed a heart transplant as soon as possible. That's when Tony came to a surprising realization. Why am I asking for David to get a heart transplant. Someone has to die. It just, it did something to me when I heard that. I mean, I started praying. Give him a new heart, but not someone else's heart. You can do that. You can give him a new heart. Thanksgiving came and went. Although he was still in need of a transplant, David was encouraged that the Lord was working. I continued to get little messages from God, end of Matthew, I will be with you until the end of age. And then I ran across uh, Ezekiel, where he says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I truly believe that he was giving me hope that there was something to come. I remember saying, thank you for healing David. I know you have healed David, thank you. Thank you, Lord, thank you. But I just, I just need that little sign it would be awesome if it snowed in McAllen. I, I believe I said Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. McAllen down in the Rio Grande Valley, and it's, it's pretty much two seasons. You have summer for about 11 months out of the year, and for one month uh, out of the year, you got fall. If you have that faith, you know, the size of a mustard seed, and you just pray, God, your will be done. It was that Christmas Eve, and everyone had gone to bed. 
Then I looked out and I saw this stuff coming down. And I opened the, the door and I was like, this is snow. I felt that silent night, holy night. There was no noise, nothing. I felt him. I felt him like I'm here. I've never left you. It continued, it continued, and it continued, and I was just, thank you, thank you. The next morning, all South Texas woke up to a white Christmas for the first time in over 100 years. And for him to show me that way, I'm just a little speck in the world, but he knows who I am. God is awesome, and his mercy and his compassion it's just overwhelming. Three weeks later, they went for David's monthly checkup in Houston. And then we go to the doctor, and he opens the charts, and it's just his eyes open up. And he says, you know what? I can't explain it, but you're not sick anymore. Well, Tony and I looked at it, he said, we know. We can explain it. Because I know I grabbed his hand. I said, you've been healed. God answered our prayer. Now my EF, is up uh, in the mid 50s and nothing has changed other than it snowed. We put ourselves in his hands and he did the rest. Since 2004, David has been enjoying life with a healthy heart. He and Tony continue to pray and thank God for their miracle. You can be at your lowest, but yet he's going to pick you up as long as you've got faith and you believe. And I have a profound love for him. That's the good news. It is not that I got healed. It's just, it's now I have a story to tell you of how great God is. Wow. What a, what a story. What a God. You know, I just feel like the Holy Spirit has put on my heart to encourage you. You know, here we are in the season of joy. There's so many signs that say joy, ornaments that say joy, signs on people's doors that say joy, Merry Christmas. But a lot of times, many people, this time is the opposite of joy. It's the opposite of being merry. And I just believe that the Holy Spirit of God wants to encourage you today, wants to fill your heart with hope like never before. I love what Tony said when she walked out the door, it was Christmas Eve, and she prayed for that specific sign of snow, something very, um, very unlikely in South Texas. And she walked outside and she realized that her God answered her prayer. She said, I am just a speck in this world. But here's the thing, we may be a speck, just one person in this universe, but God sees us, he loves us. We are the apple of his eye. You are the apple of his eye. And he wants to answer your very specific prayers today. Gordon and I are going to believe that he will answer today. Healing is for you. Salvation is for you. Hope and joy like never before is for you today. So just have faith. We just pray that the Holy Spirit opens your, your spiritual eyes and ears to receive what God wants to show you, what he has for you today. He is a good father and he gives good gifts. So just position your heart today to be still, to open your hands, to receive whatever he has for you because it's good things. It's good things. And we've got some answer, actually these are prayer requests coming in on our prayer ornaments. And we just wanna read these really quickly before we go into prayer. But somebody is asking for comfort for my family. My husband passed away in March to be healed of fibromyalgia, a new job with a consistent stable income and healing of migraine headaches. So we're gonna lift those up to the Lord. Here's one uh, asking to be healed of MS, to be healed of diabetes, financial breakthroughs so that I can purchase a car, salvation for my children who are lost. Here's Tony, she's asking for a sign. Maybe you're asking for a sign. Uh, God's given you a sign. Just look at the Gospel of Luke in the second chapter. It's a wonderful Christmas miracle. This will be a sign unto you. You will find a babe lying in a manger. 
That happened, that sign happened 2,000 years ago. The bread of life coming down to be in a manger. What are mangers for? It's to feed animals. It's a prophecy of what he is going to become. He will be the bread of life, the bread for you, the bread broken, his body broken for you so that you could be healed. When you get him, when you partake of his divine nature, that's what communion's all about. That's what Christmas is all about. A savior born to us from the line of David, all of the prophecies fulfilled in a little baby. Isn't that wonderful? Let that be a sign for you. And then you can rejoice just as David in that story rejoices. I don't rejoice over the healing nearly as much as I now have a story to tell you. Isn't that incredible? It's the word of our testimony, the logos of our testimony, the message that God wants to give and live through each one of us so that we have our own story, our own, I found a babe lying in a manger story to let people know, yes, there is a Messiah, there is a Savior, there is a healer. When you find him, you find the answer to every human need. So let's go to him. Let's go believing. Let's believe in that babe in the manger. Let's believe in the Savior. Let's believe in the resurrection. Let's believe in his sacrifice on the cross. Let's believe, and in that belief, receive the miracle that he wants to give you. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you. Ashley and I join together in agreement, touching everyone right now who is listening. Everyone, you came for all, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, you came to bring us life and life more abundantly. You came to take away all our sickness. Surely you have borne our sickness and carried away our pain. Surely you have done these things for us. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashley, God's giving us. Yeah, I just feel uh, one of the ornaments uh, prayer requests here was for a stable job. And I just pray, pray, I feel like a lot of people have been praying and crying out to the Lord for just their income, their financial situation. And I, right now, we just pray in the name of Jesus and are believing that breakthrough is happening right now in this new season, in this new year. Breakthrough is coming for you when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your job. Just continue to walk down the path of righteousness and choose Jesus every day. Choose to be obedient to what he's asking you to do with your finances. God is with you. God loves you and he's with you even in this area of your life. Continue to trust him. Continue to surrender this area to the Lord. He's going to bless you abundantly beyond what you could ever ask, think, or imagine in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's someone you're suffering with, with meningitis and it's like the entire back of your neck uh, going up into your skull. It's frozen. It's so stiff. It's just frozen. It's impossible. You can't move. In Jesus' name, that infection be gone from you right now. Let it never return, never recur. You are healed. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit just fall on you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet throughout your spinal cord. Let that infection be gone from you right now. What you couldn't do before, turn that neck and realize you just got released. Some healings are gradual. Yours is instantaneous right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. Someone else, you have a sciatica in your right, um, right leg, just shooting pains. It's agony. You can't sit for a long time. You can't lie down for a long time. You can't stand for a long time. You're constantly having to move and readjust. God's delivering you from all of that pressure, all that pinching on that nerve. Everything is being put into harmony again. You will be pain free from this moment forward. No more pain. Get up and do what you couldn't do before. That has left you and it's never ever going to come back. 
Yeah, and I also saw somebody with a uh, neck issue, and I believe it's the same person Gordon just talked about with the back of the neck. I just believe God is healing you. It's a double word. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God wants to give people a baptism of joy, mm. uh, just joy unspeakable and full of his glory. Just raise your hands to him. Just receive it right now. Let that just flow over you right now. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let, let his presence just manifest in you all around you. Be joyful. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Cast off all doubt, unbelief, all despair, all the things of, that have happened this past year to just cast them all off. Cast your care upon him for he cares for you and just receive the joy unspeakable, full of glory that he wants to give you right now. Just raise your hands to him. There it is. It's coming on you right now. Just begin to praise him. Praise him for what he's doing. Praise him for the breakthrough that you're going to have in the coming year. Yes. Praise him for that breakthrough. Put on the garment of praise. In Jesus' name, receive it. Believe it. It's for you mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, just one more thing. I believe God is touching people with autoimmune disorders. Um, there is breakthrough in this area. Uh, MS, no more active lesions, fibromyalgia, no more pain in your ligaments and joints. You will be healed completely from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Hey, man, I got to encourage that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, if you've been touched, let us know. Let us share in your good report. Give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you. We believe in that prevailing prayer that doesn't give up until you get an answer. So we're here for you. We're here for you seven days a week, 24 hours a day. All you have to do is pick up the phone. It's our honor to pray with you. So call us 1-800-700-7000. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Communities in Northern California are cleaning up after that 6.4 earthquake rattled that area. More than a dozen homes suffered damage so severe they're deemed unlivable. Some 30 people are displaced. More than a dozen were injured. Dozens lined up to pick up bottled water and supplies. Power has been restored to most of the communities, but about 200 workers are still on the job to finish that task. Businesses lost thousands of merchandise as it tumbled off the shelves. Wow, look at that. Mm. Well, state police in Albany, New York, are taking their turn as Santa's helpers this Christmas season. They're delivering toys to kids at Albany Medical Center. It's the ninth year for the event, and it brings joy to the kids that can't make it home for the holidays. Children at the hospital got a chance to meet the state police canine and pick a toy. Child life specialists say it's about making kids and their families feel at home. The troopers also provided lunch for the staff, doctors, and nurses at the hospital and they need our cheering up as well. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. Well, Christmas came early for military families at Fort Campbell in Clarksville, Tennessee, and you made it possible. CBN's Dory Neeson was on the scene to bring us all the highlights. Christmas cheer was plentiful for Fort Campbell soldiers thanks to CBN's partnership with Combat Fit Battleground Ministry. Helping the home front sponsored a delicious Christmas dinner for soldiers and their families. The highlight of the evening was a CBN Superbook box for each child, loaded with books, crafts, and DVDs that showcase the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Jesus. Helping the Home Front is thrilled to be here tonight to sponsor Battleground. We've sponsored the Christmas dinner. We're giving out the Superbook boxes. Tonight, we've got 200 families here that are getting those boxes and having a great Christmas meal. Battleground founder Donnie Bowen is grateful for CBN sponsorship. So happy for uh, CBN's helping the Home Front. I mean, this is such a beautiful event right now. Everything's going super well. But we're so grateful, very, very grateful. Fort Campbell was just one of several locations giving out Superbook boxes. In fact, Helping the Home Front distributed 4,000 boxes this Christmas nationwide. We love that they love you here at Fort Campbell, and we couldn't do it without them. 
And we couldn't do it without the multiple military installations around the country without people like Donnie and Michelle. So we are happy to be here and we go Army. The appreciation was evident. We're thankful for y'all putting this together and uh, uh, sponsoring it. And food's really good as well. Yeah. These little desserts are pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, I think it's great. I think it's awesome that CBN's here and uh, hey support and then also promoting. Hey, so I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. I know we've had some exposure to these before. I know my kids like it already, so it's good to see it again. Thank you, CBN Partners, for your generosity so helping the home front can bless military families during the holidays. And that thank you goes to you. Thank you, CBN Partners. You're making it possible for all that we do, whether it's broadcasting the gospel in multiple languages. I believe we're over 70 languages now around the world uh, to help us deliver food to people, to help military families through helping the home front, to help Ukrainian refugees, to help people who've gone through disasters. You're a part of all of it. If you'd like to join with us, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. If you're already a member and you want to increase this season, well, then we've got plenty of levels for you. 700 Club Gold at $40 a month, 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, 2,500 Club, 2,500 a year, Founder, $5,000, and then Chairman Circle, 10000 or more a year. Whatever level, when you call, ask for Pledge Express, electronic monthly giving. Bank is doing all the work, and we can send to you as our gift, monthly teaching CDs. So if you like those as CDs or downloads, your choice. Ask for Pledge Express when you call or go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you automatically sign up for it. Ashley? Well, up next, seven siblings who had never received a single wrapped gift. See what happens when they get their first wrapped Christmas presents along with the greatest gift of all. The international outreach of CBN is simply amazing. I think CBN ends up touching many of the areas of the world that you as an individual cannot touch. It allows me to be a part of such an amazing body of Christ. I mean, this thrilled us. We love to give. It's a blessing to be able to be a part of this, to be able to speak about an amazing community that CBN is. traveling, spontaneous living, and doing whatever they want, whenever they want to do it. That's what the Hawthorns were looking forward to as empty nesters. So how did this couple end up with a full house of nine children right before the holidays? Take a look. I'd already told Terry when we started keeping foster kids that we were not going to adopt any. Our kids are almost grown. Uh, we're at a point that if we want to travel or you know take some trips, whatever we want to do, we can do it. And uh, I kind of ate my words right there. <laughs> Michael and Terry Hawthorne had four grown children of their own and were thinking about retirement. Throughout their marriage, they had fostered several children. We got a little boy that is six now. He came to us at three weeks old, weighing five pounds, and we almost lost him a couple times. He had some respiratory issues and things like that that we were not aware of. And I can remember being up in ICU with them. And I think God really dealt with me then. And I knew then that it was going to be a battle to, for anyone to try to take him from us. To the doctor's amazement, his health began improving rapidly. Soon, the Hawthorns were also fostering his sister, Hazley. The Hawthorns then found out about a sibling group of seven that also needed foster care. Michael and Terry say God began changing their hearts. The children came from a very rough um, upbringing. Um, they were also physically abused and neglected. Their um, education level was so low. They were not at the grade level that they were in. I think that's when God started working on us and he had definitely different plans for our lives than what we thought. When you hear the stories of what some of these kids have already been through. You think, you know, just maybe we can make a difference in their lives. The Hawthorns fell in love with them and initiated plans to adopt them all. When we opened our foster home, we were only opened as a foster home. And you have to either be opened as a foster to adopt or an adoptive home. 
And so we had to do a little bit of changes with that, and then we have to meet all the criteria of enough square footage for the rooms, and it seemed like it was constantly a battle. After a long wait, the Hawthorns finally adopted the children. That process, it took us till December 3rd of 2018 in order to adopt them, right before Christmas time. And that was such a rewarding thing for us and a blessing for the children to be able to be placed in a home permanently through the holidays. It's just been trying to make all those um, Christmas traditions and memories for the children. It was special, it was very special. These kids had never had presents wrapped. All their, all their presents that they ever got were in Walmart bags or trash bags. The look on their faces when, whenever uh, they, uh, they got to get their gifts and their eyes were lighting up and, and then to open them. The couple is also trying to teach their new family the true meaning of Christmas. We do sit down and read the you know, birth of Jesus and why, what the real meaning of Christmas is. After their adoption, many of the children began expressing the desire to commemorate their new life by taking on new names. The judge had mentioned to us that one of the very first decisions that they would be able to make is to choose their new name if they wanted to. So we left it open to them and my oldest daughter helped them choose their first and middle names. Although the process has been incredibly rewarding, it has not been without challenges. We had to learn a lot of patience. Uh, it, it takes a lot of prayer <laughs> to be able to, you know, when you go from a, a house that is almost empty of kids to a house that's uh, overflowing, uh, it, it, it's a big, big challenge. I didn't have people who were in my life that actually loved me. And it was tough until I met my parents now. They have done so much for me. They were always there for me when I needed them. They were caring, understanding, nice, thoughtful. They were everything everyone wanted in a parent. They may not have given birth to me, but they are who I see as a parent. They're, they're still learning and we're still learning, but every day it's something new. We love each other and it's as if we're their own. No one, no one would have known that we were adopted. The Hawthorne children have adapted well to their new home and school and are all busy with extracurricular activities. Dawson is in high school cheer, and then the three eighth graders are in cheer, volleyball, and two of them are in basketball. And so that's five nights a week that they have practices they need to be at. Then we allowed Addie and Aria, our two sixth graders, they decided they wanted to play peewee basketball. Michael and Terry say they can't imagine life without their nine new children. And the kids' grades have all gone up. Their reading levels have got to where they're supposed to be, or if not above. This could not have happened if it wouldn't have been, for, you know, the Lord's help and all of this, His hand and His direction and our decisions that we made. People say they can't do it, but I think God opened your heart and your mind and your ability to be able to take care of them. God works in mysterious ways. And so if they have the heart and the ability or the space to offer that, I would definitely highly encourage people to give it a try because just that little bit of difference that they can make in one of these children's lives will live with them forever. Such a beautiful story. God bless the Hawthorns and God bless any family who has adopted or fostered. It really is a reflection of the Father's heart for us. All right, you ready for email? Uh, I guess I am. All right, well, we're going into <laughs> it. We got a little very bit of time energized here. and ready. <laughs> All right, this is Karen. She's asking, do you think that it's okay for a person to get cremated after death? I would appreciate Gordon's answer on this. I think a lot of people are always curious about this. Oh, Merry Christmas, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unusual question for Christmas. But anyway, uh, in the Old Testament, if you burned someone's bones, it was a sign of a curse, and you were cutting them off from the nation of Israel. Uh, so do I recommend it? The answer is no. Uh, I believe in the resurrection of the body, and it's part of the belief in the resurrection of the body. Um, I personally want to be buried. Uh, I don't want to be cremated. For those who say, okay, can, can I be cremated, or for those who have had relatives who are cremated, look at the sacrifice of Isaac. He was bound, the knife was in the air. He carried his own wood. That meant his body was going to be burned. And Abraham believed that God could raise him from the dead. So if you have that belief, then okay, go for it. Yeah. Um, but Good your answer. choice. Good answer.
Here's a word from Matthew 25. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Merry Christmas.